the generative AI added a reflection of the car's taillights. And look at that. This, uh, <laughs> that's Doug DeMiro, guys. I just threw my car in there. I'm here today to show you how we can use generative AI to make our Instagram pictures, our banners, backgrounds, whatever, so much greater. And this is 100% applicable to anyone who's into cars. Now, obviously AI is big and it's really popular and you're probably watching this because you saw or heard about the AI stuff going on. So I'm here today to show you how we can use this with uh, your car pictures. And I know it's really vague, uh, but I have some examples here to show you. Now I have pictures of my own car, pictures of some of my friends' cars, some pictures I found online or from people I follow. I'll shout them out and I'll put a little tag uh, if they're like a public figure or someone that you might have already been following, but I'll, I'll shout them out either way because uh, these aren't my pictures uh, completely. Uh, some of, most of them are, but uh, I just picked some up so I could show you how to do this today. So if you haven't heard, Generative AI is Adobe's newest beta feature for uh, Adobe Photoshop. And essentially you can select most anything and tell it within that selection what you want. And you can run iterations of that, and with each iteration, you can either change the prompt, you can go back and look at your old prompts and the iterations of each selection and its generative result. And you can get really into the weeds. You don't even need to know how to do Photoshop, really. You kind of do, uh, but it's not like the internet doesn't exist and you're on, you're, you're on YouTube right now, so like, just go watch another video. Uh, I can't necessarily explain everything, but nevertheless, like I said, I have some examples, so let's jump into it and see what we can do. So let's start with just a picture of my car. Let's see what we can do with that. And don't worry, I'll try to keep it nice and simple. Okay, so we have the Impala in here. Let's just make it a little more normal, something like that, and we'll call that good. Okay, so now the, the question really is, um, what do you want to do with your image, right? So this is already edited, and that's great and all, but let's, let, let's first of all, let's just start with the basics. So when you zoom way in in Photoshop, you can see that you got pixels everywhere. I have the lasso tool selected. We're going to go in here, and we're just going to select this old Instagram sticker off this... Uh, I want to call it ugly, but I know a lot of people like it, and I liked it, and I still do. Um, it's just not my best work when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to the car. So let's get rid of this Instagram sticker. We'll just hit generate, and we'll see what it does. Now, when you hit generate and you leave it blank, it will fill it in with what it thinks should be. It should be filled in with, and most of the time it removes it. So like right here, it did, and this is what I was talking about, where you can see the iterations. So that one's pretty good right there. That one's also pretty good. And, you know, you just hold Alt and you zoom out. Now you don't see that grid of pixels and you can kind of go through. So that first one has a line. That second one kind of matches the colors there. We'll call it good enough. And you can already see, like, if we just turn that off and on, it's kind of magic. I mean, there have been tools that I've been using in the past. There's an app uh, called uh, Touch Retouch. And it basically did this sort of thing fairly well by itself. Now we'll try to not select that um, antenna reflection and we'll just hit generate. So most of the time I also hit remove. And if you hit remove, that'll get rid of it for the most part. And you won't have many issues. And that did pretty good there too. So let's just go through them. We'll zoom out and we'll say, okay, you know, that second one looks pretty good. You know, it's all relative. Uh, you might think that one of these might look better than the other. But so far, I mean, look at that. We'll move this. And uh, that's that's pretty damn solid. So we also have this cheesy logo here. We'll get rid of that. We're, gonna, we're just going to make it as clean as we can. I haven't typed anything yet. And this is arguably one of the crazier parts about all of it is that you can do so much without even knowing how to do prompts. And prompt engineering and what that even means is a big D. 
steal, uh, and it will be in the future. So I've done my best to kind of, you know, be ahead of the curve. So if we come in and we're just going to keep cleaning it up, let's see how it does on the license plate. So we'll also lasso tool this and we'll just say, you know, okay, we'll type remove this time and we'll see what it does. All right. So it kind of spat out this weird blank canvas thing. Now that one doesn't look bad because it looks like a reflection. Although when you zoom out, it does look kind of weird. Okay. So it's, it's struggling with this. So let's say remove letters and we'll see what happens here. There you go. So that's, that's all right. Um, that third one, that's, that's what I wanted. So you can help it out as you go. It kind of just looks like an empty bracket without a plate on it, which is perfect. So we'll call that good. Now this is the part that you might've seen on Twitter. I'll show a picture of this. Uh, <laughs> that's Doug DeMiro guys. I'll show a picture of the album covers that people have been showing off and how they can, they can fill it up. So you have all album covers are square. When you go in here, and this is kind of crazy. Uh, hopefully this will blow your mind. We'll just hit the magic wand. Okay, it's kind of freaking out. We'll, uh, we'll go down here. And then we'll hit deselect. We'll hit magic wand again. All right, and then we'll hit select, modify, expand. We'll say, we'll say just 10. Yeah, so it didn't, it didn't touch the car. And we'll just hit generate. So just like before, and look at that. I haven't, done, <laughs> I haven't done this on this image yet. And here's the best part. When it generates this amount of stuff, uh, you, I mean, look at these options. That one's pretty cool. Uh, I will show you the next image in a second here. I have to switch out my camera battery. It is, uh, it is dying. So I'll be back. I have about four more pictures I'll show you. I'm just going to show you what it started with and then how it ended up. So my friend got a new car uh, and I was waiting to uh, see if he would tell my actual friend group because I'm not going to I'm not going to publish a video without everyone knowing that he got it. But he got it right. And it, he came over. This is at my place. Not that it matters. You can't really tell. You know, it's whatever. It's there's some trees. So shows up with the GR86. We start off with this. This is the shot out of camera. My bad. This is the shot out of Lightroom. I added a city. I thought it looked nice. If you notice, the generative AI added a reflection of the car's taillights. And then I added the moon. And that's all that you really need. To close this off, I'll show you some of these pictures here that I couldn't show you. So my uh, recording software just stopped. Sorry about that. But I've probably gone on way too long anyways. Here's my Focus ST. It looks pretty good. Here is... Uh, Street Speed 717's, uh, it was his ZR1. This is one of his posters and I just expanded it. I hope you don't mind. I'm just kind of showing this off. That's all I did with this shot. And here is yet again, my friend's car with my car in it. I just threw my car in there and I just told it to add shadows. I added a palm tree and the sidewalk. So it looked believable in a sunrise. Cause the, you know, I took the picture of the GR86 at night and I adjusted all the colors and did all that that I wanted. And then, you know, I'm dealing with some kind of sky or night sky. So I had to fix that. That's all that. It is amazing. I hope that you guys, if you have it, use it. Because uh, it's just something that uh, I think is underutilized. Personally, I will be using it for my website, for my YouTube channel. And it's it's been great. There's so much power. It's so much faster. I would highly implore you to figure this out on your own and uh, to use it. Um, it does take some time, but it's totally worth it. So hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I helped you in some way other than just talk your ear off. So thanks for stopping by. A new video is every Friday. I will see you again next week. Catch you in the next one.